And we're back. Uh, hopefully this time with sound. Um, anyway, uh, welcome to the Phantasmal uh, channel. Uh, what we're going to do here is set up uh, a kind of a nightly, I mean, I hope to make it a nightly chat room, but I, I won't always be present. Uh, what, what I plan on doing is having a few shows, a couple shows a week. Uh, as things come up to talk about, but uh, but late at night, uh, I will cut on this the YouTube channel, the chat room, uh, so people can just kind of hover and do their thing and chat art, um, maybe share some things they see amongst each other. I hope to to kind of uh, foster community around that. Um, so uh, if you will, just give me one second, and I will. Uh, Verify I have sound this time because I just shot a whole video and then I'll be right back with you. Here's we are all set. Great. Um, so I have a few things I want to go over tonight. I uh, I have uh, my first ever Magic the Gathering uh, drawing uh, or any piece of art for Magic Gathering for that matter um, by Jason Engel. It's uh, Egon, the God of Death. Uh, just recently got that from uh, M the MTG Art Market from Mark uh, Ronowitz. It's uh, Great eight art agent uh, in the Magic the Gathering uh, world, uh, so it's really great to get that. I have been after Magic piece for a very long time, but I never, never seem to get the right combination of price and want at the same time. I either really want it and I can't outbid someone, or you know, it just it just tends to get away. It's my own fault. I was picky early on when the pieces were cheap. And uh, I should have probably just bought a few that weren't just the perfect piece. Um, but I didn't. And so, you know, now I'm, I'm kind of set uh, on what I'm going to do. You know, in the future, I am going to get a, a magic painting. I, I, I put my foot down, basically. I've decided that I am going to do it. And the catalyst for this is the announcement that they... Are, are doing something I've always wanted to see them do for Magic the Gathering, which is other IPs. Um, you know, if you go into a Walmart or a Target or anything like that, just you can't find a bath towel that doesn't have an image on it of, of Scooby-Doo or, uh, you know, SpongeBob or whoever it is. I mean, branding sells things. And I've always wondered, and, 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 you know, I like fact that they create all these little micro universes but I've always wondered why on earth did they not take advantage of the ability to license things and so you know now they are they are actually going in-house and they're doing a Forgotten Realms themed magic set and I promise you I will find a piece of art in that and that will be my first magic painting I will probably overpay uh, we'll see how that goes um, my background on me again. My name is Calvin Seymour. I'm going to be your host here. Uh, I'm going to have trouble remembering what I said in the other video versus this one, but you know, for first uh, first first time out, you're always going to have some kind of problem, right? You know, you have to make sure you get it right and learn all the little things. I'm using this software, OBS. Uh, first time to really use it. It's actually pretty cool and, and not too hard to learn. So I was excited about that for sure. Um, anyway, let's let's kind of kick kick off the show. I, like I said, I've got a few items I'm going to go over. I want to do the unboxing. Unfortunately, it's already been unboxed in my other video, which I'm now taking off YouTube because it has no sound. Uh, so I will just be showing you the drawing. And uh, 
I will also show you the final pencils for a commission I'm doing with Raul Vitale um, based on Name of the Wind. Um, so I'm excited about that piece, very excited about that. Um, I've wanted to do something with Raul for a very long time. He's, I just love all the greenery and the, the, the beauty he puts in his pieces. And uh, I finally sat down and decided I was going to do something. And I did it with him, so it's great. Uh, I've got lots of smaller commissions, but really it's, it's my first big boy commission. Um, you know, I, I do have some pieces by uh, Master Wiki, but uh, disclaimer there, I met Matt at a convention. I have a programmer background, and I ended up doing a website for art. I, I manage his website to this day, so, uh, you know, I will work for art. It's, it's sad but true. My wife was like, just didn't like that too much, but I would spend it anyway, right? So, anyway, uh, let's get on with it. I'm going to show you a few pieces, and then I'm going to do what this show is really about, which, uh, for me, it... it I'm going to have, uh, you know, it's, it's about, it's about chat, it's about interacting. So, you know, if you want to say, Hey to me, that's great. Reach out. If you want to show me an artist, please do so. I am by all means, not an expert. I'm actually pretty much a collector in a bubble. Um, I want to branch out. Uh, I, I have two daughters and one thing that that's done for me is, you know, I come from this role-playing game heavy dark fantasy art demons devils dragons all fighting you know heavy metal magazine kind of background as a young guy and you know my daughters are 13 and 17 and what you know what they've done for me is um kind of just made me look at art a little different way you, you and, and i'm into lots of different things now uh i i, I have uh quite a love for a, a bunch of new artists I, i'd probably say uh let me let me oh, just a second here i need to that's not quite right there we go um so now i've got that fixed look at that mr fantastic arms there right <laughs> actually not bad if I did that with a P, right, Mr. Fantastic. Anyway, uh, it's funny. You, I would think of that. So uh, let's get this going. Uh, first thing I have to show you here is a piece uh, I got by Jason Engel. And uh, he did a nice little cover piece here for me. Thanks, Calvin. Jay. This is uh, Egon, uh, God of Death. Now, let me, let me say that I am a fan of Norse mythology, and I love that this new set is based uh, on that, you know, themed, I should say, on that. And I can't help but tell, take notice that this guy reminds me a little bit of Loki. Like he could definitely be a, a Loki type of guy. His name's Egon, God of Death. I love. I just love the picture. Um, I also have. Also have uh, some of the, you know the original painting and some images I can show you um, from the actual auctions to be worth looking at. And I wanted to also show you this because I didn't notice this in the other video, but after uh, that video stopped, he has this beautiful. Uh, Certificate of Authenticity in it, which, look at that, isn't that beautiful, what a nice touch. I thought that was something else. So super excited about this piece, uh, in all aspects of it, it's right up my alley. Uh, I was, you know, I stopped playing magic cards around the Kamigawa block, really. Uh, my friends all kind of moved off, and uh, you know this the circus that I ran stopped, and I got busy making a dollar. You know how it is. But I was a definitely a black player, necromancer of sorts. 
I'd play black mixed with any color. But black was almost in every one of my decks. If I could help it, that's what it was. Um, so uh, normally I would be watching for chat, uh, and we, you know, take make this much more conversational. But since this is my first stream, and it's likely you'll be watching this uh, on a rewatch at some point, I will just go ahead and show you uh, show you things I have. So I'm going to switch to browse mode here. To bear with me. Like I said, this is my first time doing these things. And the first thing I like to show you is um, that Egon drawing as it appeared in the auctions. So, uh, again, uh, Mark Aronowitz is an art agent. He does. He represents lots of uh, different Magic Gathering artists. And I saw this scrolling by, and I was like, man, look how cool that is. And I saw the bid was low, and I was like, well, why not? And I was, was I very surprised. No one bid against me. I've never had that happen. Uh, I got it uh, really low. I was planning on going a little higher. Sorry about that, Jason, but, you know, I guess that's, that's what happens in the free market. But very excited to get this. It's... um fantastic piece uh, you, you can see there was an alternative sketch I did not win that it, it didn't want to be greedy uh, and you know I thought hey it's just fantastic time to get my first magic gathering piece and there it is uh, also I'd like to show you the uh, original painting uh, because that was in an earlier auction now, I remember seeing this and I was like man I uh, I really want that, but then I realized, hey, I'm doing commission with Raul Vitali right now, and I'm actually I'm doing another commission with Brian LeBlanc, who he's an artist, uh, does a lot of so he's really known for his uh, his his gothic work that he's done really with Vampire the Masquerade and 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 werewolves and such. Um, but he's actually local to me; he lives about an hour and a half from me, and one of the only really top-notch artists that I know in the area. Uh, I'm from Jackson, Mississippi, and it is very much um, devoid of fantasy outlets here. I, I really only know one other fantasy art collector here in this in this city, and uh, you know she's a school teacher, uh, and you know it's not like we have tons of common, and, and, and indeed she's kind of more into the art that she's she wouldn't be into this but she's she's definitely into you know uh annie steg gerard uh um yelena uh things like that uh just tons of different artists kind of in the surreal maybe pop pop art uh i don't know but you know all that has a fantasy slant she has she has a lot of that art uh, but she's the only other person here locally for me, so that's kind of the reason I'm on here. You know, I really would like to uh, reach out and make some new friends, and I think that a little chat session uh, would be a great way to do that. Uh, we can talk, laugh, um, and find what you know, find art that's for sale out there together. It'd be great. So let me know in the comments what you think. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, I do need to kind of grow this channel to actually get people in here to chat. So that's very important. So if you haven't yet, please do uh, like and subscribe um, to the video. So the next thing we're going to show you uh, before we begin kind of shopping around is I'm going to show you a commission I'm doing with Raul. This are the, these are the final pencils. Um, so... What we're looking at here is a piece, it's inspired by Name of the Wind. I actually um, saw a miniature that someone had made, uh, Sergio Rubio, Calvo Rubio, it's, it's a long name. Anyway, he had uh, sculpted this beautiful tower and, and, and the two of them were on there. I, I could probably look that up here for you in a minute. Um, but that's what got me going, and 
I discussed it with Raul and we, we decided that instead of a tower, uh, we do something um, that could actually have been in the book. And as you'll see, this has a large standing stone, a waystone as they're known in the books. And they're, they're gates basically to other dimensions and um, they appear all throughout the books. And I'm probably going to call this painting the Waystone or something like that. Uh, and it's just, it's Caveau's playing with Denna. Uh, now they have a very um, strange, strained relationship. Pretty much it's one of those kind of deals where the writer, uh, Patrick Rothfuss, the, the writer of the series, he, he just absolutely never ever gives you what you want in a romance. Uh, he... It's just this constant disappointment. <laughs> I mean, that's the best way to describe it. But it is uh, really neat. And so I wanted that that together, but a, but a part feeling on this. And so Kavot's playing, and he's concentrating on the music, and all the, the leaves are blowing in the wind. And then I'm sitting listening, but she's off in her head, and she's looking away, and... I just wanted that little lonely moment, something that could have happened in the books. They stop for a rest at the Waystone, which they do do in the books some, and um, it's a great thing. Uh, Raul nailed this right out of the bat, right off the bat. He uh, he got both perfect. Now he had Denna a little too simple, and I had to explain to him. You know, he hadn't read the book, so I was like, she's more. She's like a courtesan, and she's a, she's going to be dressed dressed much fancier than Kavoth. He'll be much simpler, and uh, you can see the uh, final the, the final draft on this is quite beautiful. I absolutely love it, and I, I cannot wait to see more of it. You know. Um, So uh, with that, let's get into kind of the main uh, purpose of the show, and that's let's look around and let's find some art to buy. Uh, I've got several things slated. Um, give me just a minute to get all this going. Okay. So this is the Phantasmal uh, group on Facebook. Uh, you'll see uh, some nice art here by Dave Leary. Um, Dave was kind enough to, to get Dave and Matt uh, Stowicki were, were kind enough to let me use this art for Phantasmal. Um, and you know, they've been big supporters of the group for a long time. I really thank them for that. Great guys, uh, great art. I mean, I just love this piece. It's called Low Key Loki. If anyone has this piece and you want to sell it, contact me because it will. I will make that happen. Um, so let's go through the group and see kind of what's here. Okay, so as you can see, the director of the film of the firm hired to continue the credits after the other people had been sacked. We should be known that they have just been sacked. Um, this is because I did the video without any volume and just wanted to disclaim that to everyone before I went on uh, live a second time to get a real show to put together. It was, it was a goal this week, so I had to do it. Um, so let's see what we can find here. Mark Aronowitz, uh, very active in the group. As you can see, he... Uh, constantly has drawings and paintings for sale. Uh, he's a he's a great guy. I, I purchased a couple of things from him. Uh, I got a an Elric Brom drawing from him. I don't know why this is not coming up, but it is not. There it is. Took its sweet time getting here. Pretty cool piece. 
know what it is about Facebook. It just bogs sound sometimes for me. Also a bit strange with what's going on. Can I apologize? This is I'm very much a noob when it comes to this. One of the main reasons I chose to do live streaming versus um, you know making videos is I was just like the amount of work that goes into making these videos. These guys, you know, that you really have to dedicate your life to it and. Uh, that's a big problem for me because I already have my life dedicated in way too many ways. Th this, uh, in fact, this whole uh, art thing for me is a way to relax. Well, I don't want it to be too complicated. Let's see here. Some more. We've got uh, Mirian Spy uh, by David Kindle. It's pretty cool. Uh, all these drawings, they, they used to go for real reasonable prices. Like... 200 to 5 or 600 usually <coughs> excuse me um i mean they can get up to like a thousand or even two thousand if it's a crazy big enough exciting enough drawing but um, most drawings are in the in the hundreds um so this is put out by nate schultz today look at that it's a great old piece soul shriek Power. It's a lot of power. And I believe, uh, if you wanted like three or four thousand, I'm not sure. Let's see. I'm just I'm having problems with delays here, so I'm trying not to click on too much. Yeah, really slow tonight. Yeah, 4,500 USD or best offer. And by John Bolton. Tatiana Dykes has one in here as well. It's uh, pretty cool. Fulpakeet. By Justin Mara Anderson. Now, uh, Tatiana Dykes represents several artists herself. Um, as a great agent. Most of you know her if you're in the MTG community. Falcon Baga, look at that. Just love his art. Um, has a lot of metallic qualities in most of the things I see. You know, and even if it's not metallic, it just has that that look about it, you know. Great stuff. It's that, uh, his prices can be, yeah, they're $3,000 on that now. I see it now. This might not be for everyone, though. It's just like, you know, a crown on a, that's typical of a lot of the stuff that they, they assign him to do at Wizards of the Coast, but uh, I, I do like it. It's just, uh, for me, I, I want a more dynamic piece, usually. Chris Ron, Frost Peak Yeti. That's great. Uh, uh, I saw this earlier. Uh, I'm not sure if it's over yet, but, you know, it was like four or five hundred bucks on eBay. Uh, David Michael Wright here, he does these sculptures, they're great. Uh, he's definitely uh, channeling a H.R. Uh, Geiger kind of feel in a lot of his work these days. Now, I do, I, this channel, I mainly want this channel to focus on, uh, you know, art masters or you know, published artists. Um, I do often, uh, you know, there, there, there's exceptions to that. There's lots of exceptions to that. So, you know, if you're a young artist and you're interested 
and getting out there. I know it's, you know, you really, um, you know, you're, you're doing everything you can to do that. But this channel's, you know, there's lots of channels for that. This channel's really about collecting, um, you know, artists that have proven themselves and uh, have, have kind of broke through that next level. That being said, I put artists on here all the time that, that you know, in, I put them in my group all the time that maybe aren't, you know, top-notch. They, 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 maybe they don't do hands perfectly. You know, they're not Donato, whatever. Uh, whatever, you know, I kind of make those calls here and there, and I just, I post it if it feels right or if the piece is really good or maybe... Maybe they just have really good vision. I don't know why, but uh, you know, if you want to send me something, I'll always look at it. Uh, you can send it to my Twitter. It's uh, phantasmalcom. I'll take a look at anything. Uh, but you know, really, it's to me this this group is about going and buying traditional art, and so we're going to be looking at artists that people tend to collect, um, and we're going to see what they've got. All right, I think that this, this video will be shorter than the other one that I recorded with no sound, just mainly, if nothing else, that my voice is going. <laughs> uh, so let's, let's look at a couple things first off. I want to, uh, let's, let's look at some of Jason Engel's work. We saw the drawing, but this guy has been prolific. I, didn't, I did not realize how many cards he's done, but uh, it's like uh, 101 cards. Uh, I've been, that he's done for Magic, and he's done tons of D&D work. Um, this just gives you a little background on him. Uh, he's done a lot of role-playing, collectible card games. Here's all his credits uh, in Dungeons & Dragons. Um, that's not... All right, let's see here. Let's uh, look at the actual cards. Hey, Zachary. Sorry, I, um, getting, I'm new at this and didn't see you posting there, but uh, nice to meet you. So let's uh, just continue it on here. I want to uh, take a look at Jason's cards and we'll what we've got here. This whole thing is going on. I may need to kill this browser. Anyway, Zachary, how are you doing? Uh, what kind of art are you into? Oh, well, that's nice. This Athreos got a passage. Beanstalk giant. So many good pieces in here. I was actually surprised to see that that Egon, the god of death piece, was, um... I mean, I was really surprised to see it was, was traditional. I don't know if he does all his work traditional. I mean, some of them look traditional and some... Some do not. Maybe, maybe Mark will let us know. Or Jason. That piece is cool. Font of Agonies. I, I tend to. I have a lot of gothic, dark art, vampires, werewolves, that sort of thing. So I, I do like that a lot. Um. Also like really pretty art. I remember seeing this guy, this uh, Liliana Stewart. He was up for auction. I don't remember what he went for, but he was in the uh, MTG art market, I think. Uh, and he definitely caught my eyes. The type of piece I would add for sure. It's interesting to know that was Jason. I really didn't know he was this prolific. Look at that. That's a great tree. So much character. 
This piece is super cool too, very spooky. Necro Panther. Uh, so much cool stuff. Try not to read the cards. Oh, look at that. Sakushima of a thousand faces. That's cool. That's definitely a Kamigawa block type of guy. What's this from? Yeah, and I, I'm not. I can't even remember. Uh, I can't even remember what I said in my earlier video, the misfire video with no sound. So I'm not sure if I told this already, but I stopped playing Magic: The Gathering around the Kamigawa block. Um, my friends all moved off. Just really just stopped playing face to face, and uh, you know. I got busy trying to make a dollar. All those sorts of things. It just kind of only so much time of the day. And I got out of it. Always loved the game though. I thought it was great. My uh I used to have a friend who was uh, a little older than me, but he was a doctor. And, you know, he made tons of money. He was always vacationing and going everywhere. And uh, he came back from the West Coast one day, and he had cases of uh, all the Magic cards. He went crazy for them. He brought them back. We played. He went back and bought more. And one time he had a big cupboard, cupboard and it was nothing but boxes of uh, unlimited uh, legends, uh antiquity and he even had a little arabian night stuff so it was just it was an amazing time we were we like I said we were in about on the unlimited phase so i never really had any of the alpha or beta stuff but i i had a large collection at one time but sadly i, I had my collection stolen not once but twice the entire thing uh, i don't even know how that's possible but it it happened that was really one of the things that soured me on 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 it you know if you have your collection stolen and you start over and i mean it's a real downer a real downer uh okay so let, i'll do a quick look at raul's art as well um just give you a little more of a insight here Yeah, definitely having browser load issues here. I don't know what's going on. Some issues going on. Looks like an asynchronous thing. If I kill that, I wonder if the images will load. What fun. So maybe if I take the audio from this one and the pictures from the other one, I can make a video. <laughs> that's, a, that's what it's going to end up being. I can see that now. Uh, dun, dun. There we go. Okay, um, as you can see, it's just beautiful work. I'm gonna try to, I'm not gonna go into them individually just because of these load times that are going on. And we'll just take a look at this piece by piece. Uh, it's a beautiful collateral piece. 
Now this piece is one of my favorites. Um, I forget the name of it. I'm not good with remembering names of anything. If I ever meet you and I can't require, you know, remember your name right off the bat, it's normal. Please don't be offended. I remember lots of names, but at the moment in time, I need to recall them out of my head. <laughs> That's just beautiful. I, I the, looking at these make me so excited for my commission piece. It's it's not even funny. Now this piece I've seen it for sale recently. I think it's over at uh, ComicArtFans.com or was. I believe it was like. $3,200, don't hold me to that, but I think that's right. Might be $3,500, I'm not sure. If you're looking for a Griffin piece, that's a, you could you could do worse. I love Raul's stuff. So much beauty on them. Look at that. So much beauty. All right, moving on. That's uh. Okay, so I saw right before I got on here that the Dark Art Emporium uh, is doing a, a show. Um, let's take a look at that. Now, one thing I'm going to be very careful with in the future. Um, Yeah, I'm definitely having some technical diff difficulties. I just got a warning that YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming, and such viewers will experience buffering. That's great. I will have to work on this. Uh, obviously, maybe improve the quality of what I'm working with here. It's been a bit of a shortcoming. Dark Art Emporium normally has some very uh, dark art. It's one of the reasons I like it. Um, but it's also very affordable art. And I actually pre-screened this to make sure I could show you because YouTube has a lot of rules about what I can show in the terms of nudity and, and violence. And I don't want to get in trouble. So I will probably... Um, Definitely have to pre-screen most things from here that I would look at or show. Uh, but you can always go there yourself. DarkArtEmporium.com Great stuff. Great deals. Shane Izikowski. A lot of work. That's a good piece, so she's sewing up her heart. And uh, pretty reasonable. 780 is definitely in that range of affordability. Right, it's a great place. You can find some really cool art you can't just find anywhere. I also got a message from Jane Frank. I mean, immediately as I was going live on the first video, and she has uh, some work, uh, a collection by uh, Keith Scaife. Uh, I'm not familiar with Keith, um, but uh, that's, you know, a lot of the times on while, um, I don't always know the artists. They tend to be um, older era and I am still learning, you know, like I said, I'm kind of a, uh, I come from that role-playing game art background, and that's what excites me, and so a lot of the other stuff, anything science fiction, fantasy, or horror, I love to look at, but I, I maybe don't have as much of a deep connection with some of the artists, and, and I don't know them as well, so I'm always up to learn about artists, uh, if you've 
you've got someone you think I should look at as you hear me uh, rambling, let me know. Let's take a look at this Keyscape collection. Keith was born in Lonington, southern England in 1960 and from the earliest age was inspired to draw spacecraft and make futuristic vehicles by TV shows like Doctor Who and the Gary Anderson puppet series Thunderbirds. In 1968, Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey exerted its influence and that combined with reading science fiction and seeing the vivid cover artwork of Bruce Pennington and Chris Foss in particular along with the illustrations of Roger Dean and Sid Mead, convinced him to leave school at 16 and enroll at the local art college, the League School of Arts and Crafts. Now, you know, I did about the exact opposite. I went to college, I took one art class, and I decided I would never be a professional artist. It's not that I was bad. It was just I just realized it was going to t turn the love of mine in, into a job, and I really didn't think it's the kind of job that you know I could have made a great living at you know and here we are in this day and age where artists are famous and they're celebrities but you know it really wasn't like that then I didn't want to be a starving artist and I gave up my love sad story but that's why I collect now really honestly I haven't had the patience for much these days so Sitting down, when I sit down and draw, it's pretty rare for me to do it anymore. I'd much rather dream it up and just work with someone that's a lot better than me. I don't know, who knows though. Maybe kind of exploring this stuff will get me going again. So, you know, I always thought, and I don't have any science fiction art. I'm almost all fantasy and gothic and whatnot, but I always want to get like a little wall and, and do a bunch of spaceships. It'd be great. I've seen that one. Good. All these are great prizes, too. I mean, you just want to start collecting fantasy art uh, you know look look here I mean there's lots of affordable things here you can probably find something you like let's check out the bad apple artist collective these are, this is a great collect, collection of really highly skilled artists. Um, you know, all the collectors, you're going to have varying degrees of you know, who's good, who's not, and different flavors. So you have to kind of, uh, um, you know, overlook some for the others that you really like. I I really think that uh, this is one of the best ones out there, though. They... They are uh, constantly putting out great things. And a couple of artists I follow individually, I really like. I am really having some connectivity issues here. I hope this is watchable. I'm going to definitely keep the clicking to a minimum, and we will hopefully just get into the Valentine's Day auction. Now these are all ACOs, you know, these are very small paintings about the size of a magic card, really. Um, I have a couple up here on my wall that you can see. Um, so they're about that size. I have a nice little sketch by Raul here as well. You see that well. Little dryad that I keep on my desk. It's the same size 
so every one of them in this series are very small um, let's bring it up This is going to take too long. It did not do this on my first video. I don't know what's going on with that, but it's definitely going to be too long to click through them. So we're not going to get a great, great view. Uh, let's just scroll and see what we can see. Well, these three are by Brynn Elizabeth Barry Atua. I hope I said that right. That last name's a tongue twister. If I'm not looking right at the words, I don't know that I get it. Um, I'm just kind of mentioning the artists that I can recognize. This is uh, Yelena. I think I'm saying that one right. Um, w. Rose, right, I think. These are all great. All these start at $20. Uh, I mean, I think if you look at some of these bids, maybe at like 50 or 60 bucks, but you, that's you know, affordable stuff. And they're very beautiful. This is uh, Margaret uh, Morales art. I love her art. Uh, it's very soft and beautiful. I never, you know, the problem I have with it is the subject matter is isn't usually my thing. But sooner or later, she's going to do one. It's going to be my thing, and I'm going to get it. Uh, that's uh, it's. I'm pretty sure it's how is it Scott Howington? Oh, hold on. I, I, again, bad with names. Let's let's see how bad I got that. I'll uh, wait for the click. I don't attribute him here, but I think that's who it is. Those are also his, for sure. That's a great little collective. Um, as slow as things are, I'm going to try to go through... And we're still going to try to go through these Facebook groups. It's great stuff. Anybody out there? I see some, see some connections, but how how's the uh, audio and video coming through? It definitely looks like the video is coming through choppy. I have to figure out uh, what's causing that. Probably my ISP is my guess. Well, considering the technical difficulties I'm having, I'm going to just, I'm going to instead uh, switch from this and I'll try to do another show this weekend where I go through uh, some more areas and I'll pick up here with the Magic the Gathering uh, art market. There's a bunch of good stuff in there all the time. We'll close that out. And let's, uh, let's look just at one last thing and that is going to be, um, I just want to mention the passing of Rowena Morrill. Rowena is uh, just a fantastic artist uh, I can recognize her work very easily most times it's just um, I've always seen her stuff at heritage auctions and wanted to get it and I never have been able to you know make that happen and it's really sad to see she's passed away I understand she had a cardiac arrest um, unexpected passing so those are sometimes uh, 
the hardest to take, you know. I can definitely see a lot of my uh, Facebook friends uh, that were, you know, knew her in real life were definitely feeling this one and just wishing, uh, you know, wishing her uh, family peace and hopefully they will find that. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I really hope this turns into more of a chat community. I think as I begin to do these and we get a few people in here, maybe we can make that happen. It'd be really cool if we go and pop in on websites and we can uh, actually find pieces and buy them together and we can monitor auctions and chat while we bid against each other. That would be that could be quite interesting, actually. But uh, anyway, we'll see how this goes. I definitely would do this if there seems to be interest in it. Uh, I feel like I can maybe generate more interest this way than just doing the posting to Facebook. So I am definitely up for doing more of it. Um, hopefully you are too. And uh, thanks for following. And if you will, uh, if you like this, like it and subscribe to the channel. Uh, that would help me grow. And the more people that uh, do that, the more people can see this video, which will be great. Um, and we'll get, you know, we'll foster the kind of community uh, together that uh, we'd all like to have. Um, so anyway, thanks for being, uh, you know, thanks for uh, watching this. And hopefully I will see you uh, either in the in the chat or uh, on my uh, fa Facebook group. By the way, you can get there by going to phantasmal.com. It will uh, redirect you there. And uh, that's a good way to find it. If not, just jump on Facebook, type in Phantasmal. You should find me. Thank you.